When the boat that John Jones and his wife Goldie were in flipped over far from shore, they were thrown into the frigid waters of the lake. The only other people out that wintry day had no idea they were in any trouble. I decided to bring my board and my sail in. And then I heard this noise again. I saw these things popping in the water. They were probably two to three hundred yards away. Even though I can't distinguish who they are or what it is, I knew that it was those people who went out in that boat. All of a sudden, I hear Dave yelling. But when I looked windward, it all came together. Help! I held on to her for a long time. And I think I got so cold, I didn't realize that she wasn't there anymore. I have a car phone, and I phone 911. I saw this big, beautiful wind surfboard coming towards me. I said, thank you, Jesus. There's two victims, and that one is unconscious, laying dead style in the water. I noticed that water was causing the hood to choke the neck, and I went immediately to untie that. So at that point, I set myself up where I can hold on to the board and have full control of it and holding the boom so I can keep the sail out of the water. And I don't even worry about kicking because the wind is blowing us straight to shore. You okay? Okay, you're all right. We're going to rest you, all right? I want you. I said, right? get my wife. Don't worry about you're me. Okay. So we're inside the board. The window the other side of the board. We're going in, all right? I'm starting getting worried, going, I don't want this to be a dead body. So I started talking to her, telling her, don't you die on me. The Fairfield County Rescue Squad had been dispatched, but they were 12 miles away. And I literally could not stand up, so they had to carry me. And I said, my wife, where's my wife? And he says, here she is, right here. He says, we're going to leave you right here at this bush, and we're going to work on her. She was blue. I mean, her lips were as blue as I've ever seen these bite lips in my entire life. Robert searched for a pulse and listened for respiration. He got none. Take care of what? And I'm thinking, i got to do something now. We've got to start CPR. Arms up her. Her lunch started coming up. And I just reached over there and wiped her mouth off and said, Robert, go for it. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005. Good day. 1001. There was so much intenseness at one time, I was overwhelmed. My senses were overwhelmed. You all right? 1003, 1004. And I thought she was dead. I just really thought inside myself that this lady has died. You get the bag, I'll get the dry The first paramedic to arrive at the scene was Steve Wilson. I checked for pulse and there was a very faint pulse. So we stopped CPR, we put on the monitor and it showed a heart rhythm. But she still wasn't breathing. You could see relief that we were there in the faces of the the wind surface. All right, break. All right. Got good breath sounds? Okay. Contact life reach and get them in the air. ASA. The EMS people asked us to take this individual to the EMS truck and just rope him and cover him up with some blankets. He was conscious, but he was mumbling and just not there. He was right on the stage of going into full hypothermia. One of the rescue squad members notified Life Reach Helicopter for us, and they were setting up the landing zone at the ball field. 
Robert. He was an emotional wreck, like me. We had all this excitement, all these sirens and lights and people running around, and the helicopter flew in, and the next thing we knew, pow, everybody was gone, and we were the only ones on that lake, me and Robert. Goldie Jones was transported by Life Reach Helicopter to Richland Memorial Hospital and examined by internal medicine resident Oscar Glover. Can you tell me what happened? Can you tell me what happened, ma'am? She was cold to touch. Okay. Her core body temperature when she hit the door of the emergency room was 87.7 degrees, which is extremely low, extremely low. Okay. Not. Our immediate response was to treat the hypothermia. She couldn't breathe well on her own. She also smells, also got a smell of gasoline or kerosene or something like that, so I don't know if she aspirated some of that, too. Okay. All right, one, two, three. It was hard to get oxygen into her lungs. And she did not do well at all on the ventilator. The majority of victims that suffer from near drowning, the mortality comes from pulmonary edema, a fluid in the lungs. Her prognosis was poor. I'm just going to shine a little light in your eyes. I walked in there and she had all these resuscitator and tubes and stuff running from her. I almost fell out. I, I did not realize the seriousness of it until I saw her. Then I got scared. As the days progressed, she continued to improve. Over a period of time and with some coaxing and a lot of family support, she did get better. She's a fighter. Goldie spent 22 days in the hospital. She has no memory of what happened that day. Okay, give me a little you just want I said, John, who? The Windstar. He said, that is the one that rescued you. How did he? I talked to Robert on the telephone, and he was so happy to know that he was there to rescue me and to save me. It's just a miracle that they were there and that they saved my life. But Robert would come out of the water. I knew right there that this woman is like someone I never met. I could tell she was just a nice woman to be around. I mean, it's like you could not feel tense around this woman. It was just too much love in the air. Yeah. I never thought in a million years that I would be doing CPR in individual. <laughs> it's made me aware that everybody should learn CPR. It's important. You never know when you may use it. <laughs> John and Goldie pulled a surprise on us, a token of their appreciation for what we had done for them. I would say I love men. <laughs> I went down and had my trophy made. I applied for David and I applied for Robert. It has to a friend in the wind from John and Goldie Jones. It's a good bond, good friendship. God has given us life. He has brought us closer together. And I think there was a purpose for this. Yeah. I'm a John and I are pals. We kid each other. We joke with each other. We tease each other. We harass each other. <laughs> we aggravate each other. He snores. <laughs> she snores too and accuses me of snoring all the time. You're supposed to get it on top of the waves. Robert and David. What I think about those skinny guys? Just like brothers. Just like family. I'll consider them as part of the family in the day to the week. Yes, sir. Next. She's been healthy since the day she was born, and all of a sudden now she's laying here lifeless in my arms, and I just wanted her back. I did.